Yo, what's up? This is Nobu. It is uh, Monday. What's today's day? June 6th. June 6th. I'm in, uh, not in Bloomington, Indiana. I went to college in Indiana University. Shout out to all my Hoosiers. Me and my guys, some guys from school, we're, we're a little bit outside of Bloomington. Cabin, real nice. Got wood, and antlers, and dead bears, and everything all around us. A little private lake outside, so. Uh, just doing some, you know, some fishing, getting away. And I'm actually trying to decide if I want to day trade today. So <laughs> I got 10 minutes to figure that out. Uh, thanks for being here. If you in the inside the trading group, what's up? My Limitless Private Group, what's up? My YouTube folks, what's up? If you just know me from Facebook, what's up? So what I want to do real quick. Mark has been down this year. It's been down. I think you know this. I think you should know this. If you don't, that's a problem, right? Where are we? You should always know where the market is, especially if you're a trader, especially if you're a trader. You should know. I'm going to show you all a little private lake in a second, too, before I go. It's going to be real quick. It's going to, I mean, literally, I'm about to trade in 10 minutes, so it's not going to be a long, it's not going to be a long session, but I do want to cover some stuff real quick. Um, If you're a trader, what's your morning process? What's your morning process? You should have one. Whether that includes having a mantra, something that you repeat to get you focused, thinking about the day. You probably should have gotten up early enough to go back and maybe review your trades for last week. How well did you do last week? If you had to grade yourself, how well did you do? A, B, C, D, F. And then what problems, what what um, mental, psychological barriers are you constantly experiencing that you need to work through, get some support, some accountability, get a coach? Google some articles. What are you doing wrong? Holding your trades too long, hesitating, missing trades, jumping in them late, chasing the money. What are you doing? You should be thinking about this stuff. Um, for some of you, you need to literally print out, write out on a little sheet, put it near your computer, wherever you trade or on your phone. Your exact setup. What are you looking for? The market is just patterns. All it is, more prices go up or down. I know we have a million trillion different indicators and patterns and a million gurus out now, I know. But if you think about it, all Apple is going to do today, it's going to be higher or lower by the end of the day. That's it. We read prices from left to right. There's tons of different patterns, bullish flags, dojis, but, uh, moral boozoos, or you got all these different uh, dark cloud cover engulfing patterns. Right? People see all kinds of stuff. People see different stuff. Prices is going up and down. So how 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 well has your system um, simplified this really, really complex thing called trading? All right. And do you know exactly what you're looking for? If I ask you, what's the perfect trade? What do you want to see today? And if you see it, you'll know exactly what to do. You're going to act off instinct. What is that? What is it? What do you want to see today? What do you want to see? So let me pull up the market real quick. Um, actually, I'll pull this up. Oh, let me take this off. So, 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 this is uh, this is NASDAQ, and I'm on the week chart. Why the week? Because a lot of y'all love to run to the day chart. I know, I know, I know, I know. But if you look at the week, it's going to give you a bigger overall view a lot faster. It's less candles, all right? It's less candles. So what do you see? If you don't see that we're in a downtrend, I know you see it. I know you see that. I know you know this, but to give you some specifics, uh, we hit a high back on 11, the week of 11, 22, November uh, of last year. And so far this year, the market has dropped about 32 percent. You should know that. Why should you know that? Because if we go back and we look at COVID. Man, let me go to the month chart real quick. If I just jump back and look at COVID. Well, how far did COVID drop? COVID itself back in 2020, a 30% drop. So think about that. Right now, we're pretty much getting the same type of COVID pullback post-COVID. We dropped 30%. We ran for, what is this, like 18 months? Look at that. It's 18 months of straight bullish activity, very bullish activity. All right. These two lines here, when they merge, that's an incredibly strong buy, buy, buy. It's going up. It's going to reverse. It's going to change direction at some point. All markets do. 
But what we're experiencing right now is very normal. It's cyclical. It happens. Could we roll into a recession? Yeah, that's possible because of all the different economic factors. Uh, millions of people leaving their, well, maybe not millions, but people leaving their jobs. I don't know the exact amount uh, of people who've left their jobs since COVID started. Companies having to reshift. People like me, business owners, having to like rethink your business model, engaging customers differently. The world is different. People not flying as much. It's, it's a whole different world in just two years. But what you're experiencing right now, this 30% drop, it's normal. It happens. The problem is, the problem is, if after this phase, this downtrend ends, whenever it ends, whether that's this quarter or four quarters from now, we're going back into a strong uptrend. Will you be investing in the market for that next major bullish run? We had the recession, which was like 19, 17 bad months. Then we had 12 years of bullish activity. COVID dropped us for two or three months, two months, really. Then we had 18 months of amazing growth. And now we've been having seven months of slow. But if you look at the overall picture, most of the time the market's bullish. Right now, we're just experiencing a downtrend. That's all. That's all it is. My guy Rolando Tate said increasing volume, RSI, and convergence, then confirmation. The 20-day and more confirmation on the fibs. Okay, cool. So what he was doing is he's giving me an example of what he's looking for. He wants increasing volume. Momentum happens from volume. Think about it like this for a second. I used to do this with my kids. I used to teach kids first. I love teaching kids. A little easier to teach than adults. <laughs> uh, if you put a bunch of kids in the room and do anything to get them to understand the concept of volume, you just got to get them to clap. <laughs> right? One person clapping like this, not it's not a eh, it's low. But if you can do something fun to get like 50 kids in a room clapping or adults, the louder the volume goes, it creates a momentum of sound. It's the same thing with the market. The more volume, right, the higher chance you're going to clearly be able to see the true direction and go with that direction. Once again, I started to say all markets, do, all prices can do are go up or down. Today, matter of fact, let me show you this real quick. Oh, let me not, before I do that, hold on. Uh, volume RSI, that's relative strength index, right? So relative strength. He wants volume, but that's good. He wants to also know what is the relative strength. It's an index, I mean, indicator, mathematical um, tool that helps you to see something visually. You know, it's different levels, tons of different indicators. I could talk about them all day. Convergence, what is convergence? Uh, divergence is prices. Um, uh, think about convergence, something coming together, right? Convergence, something like slowly pulling apart, right? So heavy volume the strength of that volume and then the convergence i could go into convergence a little bit deeper um confirmation i don't know what his confirmation is but i guess it's basically usually when people say confirmation it's just a number of a series of checks do you have a checklist do you know what you're looking for if i literally said what are the three things you need to see before you take a trade some of y'all don't know and then you wonder why trading's hard i bet if i ask steph curry what is he like? Literally, what are the mechanics of every single three pointer? I guarantee you, he has a pattern, process, system, technique. There's something he's following. But when he's shooting in the game, it's literally all instinct. It's all automatic. When you trade, you got to shoot like you're right there on that three point line with nothing, nobody. Even if somebody's in front of you, you still got to take the shot. Whether somebody's on you or you wide open, you got to take the shot. But do you know when to take the shot and why? That's the thing. It's, it's like uh, trading ain't nothing but a sport. It's, it's like the most intellectual. Oh, man, the most emotional, intellectually uh, advanced sport ever, ever, ever. That's why most people ain't good at it. <laughs> right. Uh, and Fibonacci retracements. Uh, well, I don't mention my guy. Court said, what up? What up, bro? What up? What up? I can't. Uh, when I get back, when I get back, we're going to talk. I'm still in Indiana. OK, it's 928. I wasn't supposed to go this long because clearly if I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> I ain't really like prepared, prepared. Oh, um, see what I'm saying? Why, why, we, why, why do human beings do this? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do we do this? Why do we cut the head off of animals? We got deer over here. What did these deer do to people? What did these deer do to us? They ain't do nothing to us. Well, we got a bear upstairs. I don't know. 
I don't know. My guys, man, they over here. So this is the little private lake. I don't even know if y'all can see it. It's small, but it's all we need. It's three of us from college, Indiana University. Uh, these two are right where, pow, 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 no, pow, 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 there we go, right there. So they probably, you know, you know how it is. Every group of men needs needs their leader before stuff really gets popping. I got to go out here and show these dudes how to fish. We came out, well, we were here. We were, uh, we were at a different lake last year. Oh, that's the bell. That's the bell. Uh, let me check something real quick live with y'all. Um, let me actually pull it back up first. Though. Hold on. Let's see what the ES is doing. The ES is S&P futures. All right. I'm going to go to a 30 minute chart. Uh, let me get rid of this that I drew for whatever reason. Okay. So check this out. Just, just the last, just the last two days. What happened the last two days? Uh, let's see. Last two days. So, Friday, had a downtrend. A little downtrend push right off the open. And then literally for the rest of the day, we really didn't go anywhere. We tried to make a little move back up to this 20-period moving average. Failed attempt, came right back down to these lows. Uh, Pre-market post, right? Went into a little, uh, little tight area here this is six o'clock in the morning when japan opens all right this is the european open right around Oh, there we go. I'm back. Man, I tell you. I love Apple I do. Oh, there we go. And I got a pretty pretty nice uh laptop, but um I need to take it in because something's up with the battery. I unplugged to show y'all the lake real quick. And just literally that little two minutes battery just it's crazy. Then it pops right back on. Um, so what I was trying to do real quick is just show you guys, um, I don't trade, eh, sometimes I do trade like the open open. It just depends. Most days I don't, I go back and forth, depending on when you ask me, honestly. <laughs> um, that first 15 minutes is a little chaotic because we're trying to establish position, right? You got, um, you got folks who are essentially, you know, 
literally trying to own the day. All right, we're gonna be bullish or bearish. Some days we start the market. First 15 minutes bullish, the whole rest of the day is bullish. You knew the day was bullish just from the first 15 minutes, if you know certain technicals align, right? So sometimes it's really that simple, you know what I'm saying? Most of the volume comes in early, right? Most of the volume comes in early. That first hour, right? That's where we get most of the volume. Uh, let me pop this back up real quick though. Because I ain't gonna do nothing till 10 o'clock. If I do do something today, because I clearly should be out here fishing, but uh, I haven't done any any of these in a minute. So, you know, I love y'all. I love teaching, man. I love you know sharing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, let me find that other screen though. Uh, which one is this though? I think that's this one. Yeah. Oh, let me move this one. Let me get rid of this messenger. Um, okay, so uh, what I was saying was this right here. Um, this is Japan's open somewhere back here, somewhere in here, and two, three in the morning is Europe's open. All right, and you can see right in here this move up, this bullish move from three roughly to like four thirty. That hour and a half that was Europe's open, right? That's why you see that move almost every morning. If you look at these futures charts, all right, and you can get a good gauge of where the market is going if you take a look at futures. Why? Because the big money really is invested in futures, S&P contracts, not the ETF, not the SPY. All right, we talk about the SPY. That ain't, that ain't, that's not where the big money is held. It's not. It's in futures. All right. The leverage, I don't have time to explain it. Google it. Google it. Why is, why are futures so important, right? So what are we doing right now? Nothing. Just a little small pullback. Mark is bullish. Today is bullish. I'm on a 30-minute candle. This first 30 minute, we touched this top band, right? So clearly you can see we got a little bit up here. All right, we got some resistance up here. All right, that's all. We touched that same area one, two, three, seven times in the last couple hours. So the market's just right now like, okay. Okay, we don't, we don't have enough gas just yet. But are we in a downtrend? No. This is this is like it's actually really um it's simple, but it's advanced. Most most traders, I would say one of the core things you need need to be able to understand is that markets go from uptrend and then they start to reverse, and then there's like an actual confirmed downtrend. That's all everything is doing. Up starts to reverse right we might range for a while then go into a reversal then go into a downtrend all right and after that downtrend you know the recession was a downtrend if i asked you to literally point out the exact month that the s p started to reverse that the reversal started not not saying that the um we were back in an, a true uptrend post-recession but when we started to fundamentally get the type of volume, activity, et cetera, to actually say the market is officially reversing. We are getting enough bullish activity where if you're short, you're probably not going to make any money. If you're long, you might make some money, but it's, it's literally like a gray area in between. We don't just go from straight bullish to straight bearish. There's always like a period in between as we go from one to the other. But a lot of people can't recognize it. What you're seeing right now here on this chart? Right now, this is an attempted reversal. Attempted. It's not a downtrend yet. We're still in an uptrend, technically, technically. But right now, based on this 30 minute chart of the SP futures, it's a reversal. We pull back to the 20. That yellow line is a 21 period moving average. What the heck is that? It's the baseline, it's the average. It's the average. Price is always going to pull back to the average. Why? For the same reason that. People get really excited. Oh, shoot. I was like, wait a minute, I smell something. I done burned my dog on tortilla. I'm about to make me a little chicken burrito. Y'all can see I worked out this morning. Actually, I feel great. I got up at seven and uh, did my workout. So, um, 
what was I saying? Uh, uh, 21 period moving average. It's just the, um, it's literally the average. It's literally the average. All right. Let me actually make this full screen for a second. It's the average. Um, it's going to essentially help you to know where's the most probable area for price to test. Right. If we get a strong pullback, we always just coming back to the 20. So right now, literally what you're watching right now, market just pulled back to the 20. All right. Matter of fact, no, I'll go. I'll expand back out just a little bit more. All right. So you got this candle here. We got this like, you know, it's kind of like a bullish flag. Right. We pushed up and then we pretty much have just been ranging all morning. All right. Look at this all morning. All right, so my question right now, as an advanced trader, I want to see, are we going to be able to close in this 30-minute candle? By 10 o'clock, will price be able to close under this candle right here? This candle from 4 o'clock. Because as you can see, none of these candles close under it. That's a range. All right? And what do we do? We either pierce ranges and go back up, or we're going to actually try to, right, try to actually turn into a downtrend. Right now, it's bullish. Usually with these types of patterns, what happens? We go back up. So don't be surprised today if in 30 minutes, an hour by the end of the day, we're bullish. Again, right? We're hitting not necessarily new highs, but we're just going back up to like 4160 to try to go higher. All right. If you're day trading, I'm gonna give you this one little gem real quick. Um if you're using think or swim, please. You smell that? I forgot I had it done on tortilla. <laughs> you wanna um oh okay cool. we gotta uh we gotta pivot up at 4166 all right you gotta have these pivots on your chart they make it real simple they do look at look at uh, let's go back to friday for a quick second look at friday friday right off the open all right didn't really go anywhere we pushed up at 10 o'clock we touched this pivot touch this these two lines which are really really key i ain't gonna even tell you what they are <laughs> Now, I'll tell you what one of them is. One of them is an eight-period exponential moving average. When we push up in a downtrend like this, the squeeze is red, these candles are green, price is clearly pushing down. When we push up, touch this line, and start coming back down, all we're doing is about to fade back down and go to the next pivot. That's all we did. That's all we did. All right? So today, right now, all right, every single morning, one of my simplest, strongest, easiest ways to know where to make money is where's the next pivot. All right. So we got a pivot right here at 41.66. We got a pivot down here at 41.30. All right. So those are the two kind of key areas that um, the market today is going to get to. It's going to one of them. I don't know which one. It's going to one of them. This happens every single day. I've seen this for you literally like 12 years that's why i trust pivots and then what is the market doing right now as quick as i said that we came down we hit the 20 all right little, little little push of bears bears right off the open you know a little push down and what are we doing we bounced off the 20 we retested that average all right we're back at the highs of this range what we're probably most likely about to do is push up to 4166 just patterns, just basics. I don't have a, a you know crystal ball, but based on what I'm seeing right now, that's most probable for several reasons. The squeeze is bullish. The squeeze measures, uh, the squeeze is indicator down at the bottom. Those dark blue bars, even though they're dark blue, dark blue with the little green dot, like right, right down here, this little green dot says you have really good volatility. That's a mixture of Bollinger Bands and Keltner Channels. Uh, we just bounced off the 21. That's a positive sign. All these candles are blue. This is a TTM trend or what's called a John Carter study. That's bullish. It's got a ton of stuff saying, yo, we're pushing up right now in this moment. Now, could this fade? In the next 17 minutes of this 30-minute candle, could price flip back over? Yeah, we could do that. But right now in this moment, it's bullish. So... Once again, if you're trading, you know, what's your process? What are you looking for? Like, for real, what are, what are the two, three things that you need to see that tell you I have a trade? 
And then are you looking for that same thing every time? Now, some traders have multiple strategies, right? So if you're like me, you want to, you, you can't really just have, like, you can't be a good trader and just have one strategy, right? All I care about is are we in an uptrend or downtrend? Those entries for me are literally the exact same thing. Just one is up, one is down. And then depending on if I have the right um, setup, I'll take a reversal trade. So I'll get in the bullish move before um, novice traders really even can see that it's bullish, right? So by the time they start getting in, I'm actually taking profit getting out, right? That's why I always say social media makes people really bad traders because the best traders are already in. If you hear about a stock hitting new highs, everybody's excited and everybody's talking about it on social media, you're late. All of the, all of the good traders are already in. <laughs> All right. Well, this when it hits social media and everybody starts to buy it, that's cool. It definitely can. You know, we can g gain more momentum. It can keep going. But trust me. By the time social media gets a hold of it, the best traders are already in making money, which is why sometimes we hear about things. We go look at the chart. You know, you heard about somebody who told you something. It doesn't pan out. Why? Because as soon as everybody got a hold of it, the move was already over. People were literally starting to take profit. It was starting to come down. People are hitting the sell button to get out because you got in late. All right. So I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm talking to. But, you know, this game is um, it's not for the weak. It's not. If you don't if you don't like reading, if you don't like if you haven't persevered through anything in life for real, trading ain't for you. Mm -hmm. Now, investing is investing is for everybody. Trading, though. Oh. Oh, I wish I wish we talked honestly about what trading really requires, the grit, the perseverance, the love for like this intel very much so intellectual, um, challenging thing that is going to give you adversity every day. The market doesn't want you to make money. Actually, every time you lose, somebody's making money. So some people want you to make money. I mean, people want you to lose. You gotta think about it like that. It's war. <laughs> it's war, man. It's the best sport ever. Alicia said it's not. It's not easy. It's a different beast. Yeah, it's a different beast altogether. Different beast altogether. There's a lot of professions and things we can do. Like you could be a mediocre whatever for years and be okay and keep your job and get promotions. We've all had a boss who you was just like, man, I don't like, I don't know how this woman or this dude is is at this level, right? But relationships and who they know and experience and certifications and degrees and all of that and track record resume all of that stuff but let's be real there's a lot of mediocre people making you know vp i mean there's mediocre ceos there's mediocre bank tellers engineer there's mediocre people at every level but here's the thing about trading if you're a mediocre trader you know it like you could potentially be a mediocre whatever and not really know it. And when I say mediocre, I just mean like average. You're not amazing. You could be a lot better. You don't have somebody pushing you. You okay. You've been in your career 10, 10, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever. That don't mean you're excellent. It doesn't mean you're great. It doesn't mean you're um at the top of your game. But with trading, every single day you look at that account, that account is going to give you a performance evaluation. It's either growing or it's not. It's math. It's growing or it's not. You know if you're a good trader. Your account tells you this. <laughs> your account tells you this. Your growth curve tells you this. Your average losses tell you this. There's so much, literally so many um, metrics that can help you really just have a very clear, honest assessment of where you are. You can't lie to yourself as a trader. But in every other profession, you can lie to yourself. Your boss, I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it. I used to work at Bank of America. I know, and y'all know how corporate America works. You can like ride along on somebody's coattail up several positions just because they're moving up and they bring you on their team. And then they get a position and then they bring you on their type. That happens in corporate. That's why the networking is so key. You can't do that with trading. You ain't going to make money just because you know somebody who's making money. I can't, I can't just pull you. <laughs> I can't just pull your account up. I can't. Joel can't just pull your account up. Court. Court's an amazing trader. Just because you know court don't mean you're going to make no money. 
It's a one-on-one individual you versus yourself. It's really not even you versus the market. It's you versus yourself. That's really the thing. All right, so so peep that. Look at what just happened. We push back up, all right? Matter of fact, I'm going to go to a five-minute chart real quick so y'all can get the details. All right, so look at this. Five-minute chart. You know where that range is. We dropped. We pushed back up. We tested this 41.56, right? So we went back up to test the top of the range. Right now, we're actually back under the bottom. That's a long candle, though, right? So I had you on a 30-minute candle because I love the 30. I like it a lot. I do. It just keeps my day simple. It's only 14 candles. That's a gem for some of y'all. It really is. Think about that. Why Why? Why would I use... Why, why does somebody who's been trading for a while just say he likes a 30-minute chart, even though I'm day trading? Because it keeps seeing what the market is doing very, very clear. If I flip to a one-minute... You know how confusing how fast this one minute moves. Look at this. Just this morning. Look at the one minute just this morning. We pushed up. We dropped. Oh, we pushed back up. Oh, we dropped again. Started a little downtrend. Oh, we pushed back up. Squeeze turned bullish. Oh, squeeze faded. Squeeze back bearish. We already have had two fakes on the one minute already. All right. So the smaller, faster you're trying to make money, the harder it literally is. That's why investing is easy and trading is more complicated because you're getting more trend, more directional trend changes and more fakes. If I go to the five minute. OK, cool. Look at the five. The five is pretty much right now trying to push down. OK, you can see that. All right. We're trying to push down. We hit this top band right here. Push right back down. Hit the eight. Push right back down. All right. But if I go to the 30 just to get the bigger view. You would look at the five and be like, oh, man, we're about to crash. But the 30 is still like, mm, we're not bullish, bearish just yet. Nah, you might you might want to be a little patient, right? That's why I like these longer time frames, even as a day trader, right? It just helps to, um, helps to kind of see things clearly. Because the faster the time frames, you'll be all over the place. On the one minute, man, it's schizophrenia. You'll be, you'll be every direction. All the it, unless we have like the days that are just straight bullish or straight bear, right? But it's fast. You got to be able to move off instinct. Five minute. I like the five. I think the five gives you the best intraday directional kind of, right? The thirty just gives you a bigger, broader view. That's all. That's all. And we still right now bouncing off this twenty, all right? So we're inside of a range. We tested the top of this range. Right now in this first 30 minutes, right? We pushed down to test this 21 twice. Still haven't closed under it. We just kind of dancing. So right now the market's a little, you know, a little confused. Um, bulls nor bears right right now in this moment for this first 30 minute candle have really um established enough position to win. It's like tug of war. Right? That's all it is. Right? These long wicks, think of those as like tug of war. Kids pulling on this side, some kids pulling on that side. That's all that's happening. So, uh, matter of fact, let me do this because I meant to. I meant to hit. Um, I'll go back to Nasdaq real quick to the week chart. Nasdaq week, 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 week. So we got that thirty-two percent drop. This week is going to be interesting, right? Because. We're in a really key area. If we can get above last week's high, then we can make a really nice, easy push to 330. All right? Why do I say that? Because the last time we got above these two lines, which was back here, what did we do? We ran right to the 21, like clockwork. And then we weren't able to hold. And this was this seven bad weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bad weeks, right? But you should have already been able to see that, right? This, I remember this period. It was three weeks. The market was up. Everybody was, oh, the market's back bullish. It's like, no, nah, we weren't back bullish. That was a short-term reversal. That was a very, it was like a short-term um, bears who have made money just relaxing. That's all. Giving some very aggressive bulls a little chance to make some money. But they only made money for three weeks. And then bears ran it for seven weeks, right? So you got to be able to clearly know, like, is this an uptrend or is this just like a very, like, is this a reversal? 
Because a reversal, by definition, um, into an uptrend is when bulls will be making money. But you don't want to you don't want to go super hard because we're still fundamentally more at more likely to go right back down. The market ain't bullish yet. I know everybody's waiting. Yeah, I know we're not there yet. We're not. I'm sorry, we're not. Um, Dorian said, uh, "Oh, Darian, my butt, my bad, bro. Uh, I'm working off the five minute and the thirty. I like the five and the thirty. I just taught a futures class. I'm um, actually got one last kind of wrap up session." I like the combination of the five and the 30 and I've used them to every combination. So what works for you? You know what I'm saying? But I do. Um, I do think uh, more advanced traders are looking at some some time frame that gives you the overall picture and a smaller time frame to get a sharper entry and to also risk less. If you ever hear somebody talking about two time frames or even three, that's all they're doing. They're making sure trend direction is set, waiting on a little pullback and they're trying to get in off the bottom. All right, off the bottom of a small pullback in an uptrend to risk as little as possible, to keep your reward as big as possible. That's all it is. Five and 30, 15 and one. I've seen every combination you can imagine. So, but I like that five and 30. That's what's up. Alyssa said, can you uh, explain when you said 14 candles use a 30 minute, 30 minute chart? Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, so here's what I was saying. Um, oh, let me go back to the ES. Let's see what, what the ES is doing. And then I'm going to call it a day and try to catch some fish. Show these boys how to <laughs> show these men how to fish. I did catch the most fish last year. Though. I'm going to catch the most fish time this time, too. Um, OK, so so I'm going to look back at Friday real quick. So here's what I was saying. Friday, this 30 minute chart. All right, from 9.30 to 4, all right, there's only a certain amount of candles. So if you think about it, traders, technical analysis, and, and charting, it's really like data analysis. You're just looking at data. You're looking at numbers, prices, something moving live. You got to be able to, right? So, so the more candles, the more, conf well, I'll say it the right way. The more candles you have to analyze, the more analysis you're going to do, which potentially means you have more variability in actually being right. Right. So think about it like this. Let me let me do it like this. If I literally pulled up a month chart, month chart. And we just looked at this year. Right. Then this was uh, this was January, February. Right. So you clearly can see lower, little like right back in the range, lower a doji. Right. It's only, uh, what is this, uh, six candles for this year. Month chart, very easy analysis. Why? Because there's only six candles. There's only six candles. If I go to the day chart and I try to find beginning of this year, which was like right in here, then yeah, you can still see that this is a bearish market, but look at how many candles now you have to analyze. It's way more. Right. So as a day trader, right, if I go to the 30 minute, once again, look at a look at Thursday. Oh, hold on. Let me do it this way. Look at Thursday. All right. Thursday, right off the open, we drop. All right. Market tried to push back up, made a little reversal move here, right? Got back above the eight, crossed above the 20. All right. Bounce off the 21. He I mean uh uh closed above the 20, came back to test the 20 at eleven o'clock. And for the rest of the day, we were bullish. Right. So anywhere in here, if you're like, man, what's the trend direction? It's bullish. All right. So I like the 30. I like I like the combination of a longer time frame to just clearly see the direction, because when y'all get to these little small, super micro fast time frames and that's all you look at for the trade and the entry. I mean, I've done that for years, so I get it. But, you know, it's just more to analyze. Right, even right now, look at the five minute. This is the five minute. Is this easier to analyze or harder to analyze than this, which is a one minute? One minute has way more candles. So there's inherently more fakes. More times you're going to probably lose because there are more times where your indicators on this one minute is going to say, hey, we're about to be bullish. And then it's like, oh, no, we're not bullish. We're bearish. My bad. Right. 
so that's the that's the challenge all right you have to um when when people who are new start and try to like instantly jump into trading and then day trading it almost to some degree doesn't make like any sense you gotta be like a little crazy which we all are i mean i started you know 12 years ago trading futures and nobody told me this stuff you know what i'm saying but i wanted to learn i knew i had the aptitude i knew i would put in the work i knew it was going to be tough i didn't expect it to be overnight and i viewed it as something that could really change my life you know so uh yeah so uh 959 so y'all have been with me for this whole 30 minute camp so where are we we're still in this range <laughs> right we're still in this range We closed inside this range, so that's good, right? Looks like price tried to push down. We didn't stay down there. We didn't close under this 21. We didn't close under this range, this blue bar that I've drawn. We didn't close under that, all right? So if I had to literally just take a guess, where are we about to go in the next 30 to 60 minutes up? Oh. Where are we going right now? Up. Right. Oh, a matter of fact. Oh, well, I know I had a pivot. Uh, where's that pivot? So I had a pivot right here at 41.66. So you're probably just about to push up to 41.66. And is there money here from 41.66? Yeah, there is. Uh, this open was 41.53. Uh, we hit this pivot. That's 41.66. So what was that? 13 points. Uh one contract that's like 650 bucks. If I literally right when this candle opened at 10 o'clock said, I think we're still bullish. I want to go long. But here's the question. Yeah, I could have did that. True. Yeah. But then how much am I risking? All right. We're going right here. We're going to 4166. We do this every single day. The market tries to figure out which pivot am I about to run to? All right, but the first 30 minutes, eh, a little, little chaotic, you know, that's all, a little chaotic. It'll fake you more than um, the, you know, and 1030 has a tendency to reverse to something called a 1030 reversal, you know, little concept a lot of traders know and talk about or whatever, but um, that 1030 reversal really is just. We've had the first hour of the market being open. We we tried to push one direction for about an hour. Don't have enough volume to sustain. Usually at ten, not usually. If we reverse at ten thirty, that's why. Because we tried to go one direction. We were winning this tug of war, going one direction for about an hour. Didn't have enough bulls. Market starts to flip and go the other way. So, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, check me out on. Uh, actually, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's being noble. If you're not in our group, it's about 28,000 people in the room, investors, traders, novices, all sorts of people, millionaires, multimillionaires. I don't know if any billionaires, but thousandaires, hundredaires, and some broke people who just, you know, trying to get their finances in order. That's cool too. Join us on Insider Trading on Facebook. Insider Trading. Um, and yeah, that's about it, man. Thanks for joining me. I got to open the window, get this burnt tortilla smell out of here. Make my little chicken burrito I was about to make real quick. I need some protein. Grab some water. I got some water. And uh, go ahead and get fishing. Have a blessed day. Have a profitable, good trading day. I'm out. Talk to y'all later. Peace.